Hi, this is Deb Rose from Deb's Dab's Art Stop, and we are on phase two of painting a dog portrait with Duke. Now, in a minute, you're going to see a picture of Duke, and last time we did the background and the white sketch. Now we are going to put in the base layers of the lights and darks and the tints and shades of his skin. This will not be his final color. This is simply adding the base work. So as you can see, there's my white sketch that we finished last time. It's just a basic outline for me to kind of give myself a guide as I add in these colors. Now what I'm using is a basic brown and white and black right now. And it's just to get those neutral colors in. The neutral medium brown, the tint of my neutral brown, with the white and the shade of my neutral brown. Now, right now, I'm just kind of painting in the shape of the nose to kind of accentuate, you know, and kind of reinforce that shape of the nose. And you will see in here, I am rinsing my brush in between the color. Right now, I've just got the one color. But you will see later how I stop even rinsing my brush. It's one technique I use where I let the paints blend on the page. So that's why I'm only using those uh, black and white and the basic brown color. So I can get different lights and darks. Now, as I look at the picture... I see areas that are lighter and darker. So I'm just trying to put in those shadows, those highlights, and those basic browns. As you see, too, I am going around. I'm kind of jumping around the face. I'm not just starting at the top, going to the bottom. I'm jumping around where I see some similar colors of what I'm using. And there I'm blending the darker into the lighter that I just laid on the canvas. So you look at your picture of the dog or the cat or the animal that you're choosing to do, and you're just looking for those basic highs and lows. That is all you are doing in this phase. And you're just simply trying to lay it out. It's kind of like a color by number in a way where you're trying to look at those similar colors and lay it out across your portrait. We're not as worried about detail at this time. You can see there I put the little accent of the dark eyebrows that show expression. There may be things like that that you want to kind of go ahead and put in there. And if you remember the last video of, of Duke, phase one, when we were doing the outline as well, you are looking for those basic shapes. So you're kind of doing the same thing here, but you're doing it with your tints and shades and looking for your neutrals. So what, you know, what's the shape? What's the area that's, you know, in the light? Right here, I'm putting a lighter color in. And also my brush strokes at this point are going with the curve of the face. So where I see the fur, like it kind of goes in that angle with the curve of the face. Around the top of the head, it curves down. On the jawline, it curves I mean, it goes pretty much straight up and down. So I go with the curve of the animal that I am painting. So you see I have those strokes coming away from the middle of the forehead. Brush strokes are important. You know, and you just think about the natural organic shape of what you're painting. Where would those strands of hair be going? Where would they be laying? And you do your brush strokes in that sense. 
Now on this one, you can see all of a sudden a dark line on the side. That was where I added a dark shade and then I was, it was way too dark. Um, so I'm letting it dry a little bit before I put any other paint on there and see if you do something like that. That's all. You, if you're using acrylic paint, that's all you have to do. Let it dry a little bit. If you're using oil, you can always go back in the next day or two and add a little bit of a lighter shade in there as well. But with acrylic, I chose to just let it dry. All dogs have a lot of personality in their nose and their snout. Here I'm just putting a basic grayish color. And with the nose or snout, you will see when we get into that, there's lots of little dots. There's lots of lights and darks. I mean, very, very, very detailed aspects to the nose. But right now, we're not as worried about detail. We're just trying to get the basic look, the first basic shapes. If you remember from phase one, um, with Duke, we're looking at, we talked about when we did the background of layering of the paints. This is the first layer of Duke's actual fur colors. So it's the first layer to kind of get that three-dimensional look with Duke. So what I'm looking at also along the nose is where the sides of the nose are. You're going to see some shadow lines kind of going there. Not like a big area, just a darker line. Now you'll see your painting will go through several different phases. There's even something called the ugly phase that especially you'll get into later. You'll have some points where you're like, oh, it's looking pretty good. I like it. And then you add other colors to it to get it. And you're like, oh my gosh, what happened? Well, if you survive the ugly phase and just don't give up, you are going to be good to go because the biggest thing that most people do is once it starts not looking right, they just give up. But with the painting, it's a work in progress. And there is actually when you're building these shades and these colors on each other, especially when you're doing something like portraits, there is a phase that you could call the ugly phase. That means it's not looking totally right. So then that next layer that you put on is where then it comes back. To you so the biggest thing is don't give up just give it a try you know just keep going There, I decide now to go it dry just a little bit. I decided now to go in with a lighter color. And another way, if you're using oils or things like that, you can always take a paper towel and wad it up a little bit and dab that excess paint out so that it will dry even quicker. And that way you can go back in and kind of add the coloring that you wanted at that point. Now with the ears, when ears of dogs, the light usually hits that top edge so a lot of times that front top edge of ears are going to be lighter. And then the inside of the ear, you're going to see like a natural shadow starting. So all I'm doing is adding some of the basic coloring, basic shades. Looking for those lights and darks throughout my painting. And it will slowly bring out the three-dimensional quality. Now you see here, I use my finger as a tool. There it went a little too long for what I wanted. So I just dabbed my finger in the water and wiped it on the canvas and then fixed it how I wanted. You can also, when we go back into the background after we're done, that's where you can touch up some of those edges too. Here, I'm using my finger again. Oh, and my little paper towel. I'm just ripping a little bit off again and just dabbing it. There's always ways to fix up as you go. The biggest thing as you go, you want to keep, you know, that shape. You want to keep that organic shape and keep 
the look that you started out with, with the outline as much as possible. Now I'm just going to put my first color in for the eyes. It's the very first, first step. And again, even with the eyes, it's layering of paint. So when you start putting in these shades, remember, this is just your first step. You will go into more details later in the next videos. Now, what I'm going to do as I do these, I hope if you like challenging yourself for trying to do these different paintings and challenge and unlock your creativity, and want to get inspired through doing these different how-to videos, please subscribe. Please consider subscribing. That way you can go into the videos any phase, anytime you want. Now, what I will also do is put a link to the follow-up video in each, in the comment section of each of my videos when I post them. So you will see the phase two link in the phase one video comments. Now here I just did plain black outline for the nose. Again, the nose like the snout is very detailed. We'll get into that later. looking for those lights and darks and putting them in. The purpose for showing all this is so you can see the systematic process. I mean, you're not going to paint a pet portrait with full um, depth and three-dimensional quality in 15 minutes. So, I mean, even these videos are shorter. It took me longer than what you see. You know, I've cut out the long stretches and things like that as I was painting. But you get the basic idea of my thought process as I'm going around. I'm just laying in right now. The only concern are those lights and darks. I know I'm repeating it, but that way it will stick with you when you're doing yours. I'm excited to see some of your steps, too. So if you are trying to follow along, feel free to snap a picture and put it in the comments section of my videos. Let me know what you think and how, you know, the process is going for you. Now here I'm just working on the top of the nose a little bit where I see. Now, now just so you remember, I am not doing this all from my mind. I am looking at the actual photograph of Duke. As I'm painting, I actually have it on my iPad in my lap as I was painting this. So that way I can really look at the colors that are showing in his face. Now, these colors do not do him justice at this point, but they are those first starting lights and darks to build his three-dimensional quality. So it's just a stepping stones. Painting is all about stepping stones. I'm just making it a little darker, that part that goes back. You can see the, the nose line right now, very rigid, just a straight line down. We'll, we'll soften that up later. And some of you may even be trying to paint Duke, and that's fine if you want to go along with the one that we're actually doing. That is one way to do it as well. I hope that these videos inspire you and help you get the courage to unlock your creativity. I know the first pet portrait I did was very flat and, you know, like it didn't have that same three-dimensional quality to it. I still liked it, but it didn't have that same three-dimensional quality. And as you practice and the more you paint, just like anything, the better you're going to get and the more you're going to be able to see and you're going to find your own techniques and your own ways of, you know, like special ways that you do things like me. I like to mix the colors right on the painting. You may not like to do that. You may like to have more, you know, separate uh, lights to darks of one color. 
Now, I do have some. I do mix some of my colors on my palette. You know, I'll take a little bit of brown and a whole bunch of white to make a light tint to start from. But then a lot of my blending I do right on the canvas. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to put some darks and lights around the eyes. This is where I have a smaller brush. And again, it's going to look more outlined and everything in this face. This is your, you know, general starting phase. I mean, you got to start somewhere. And just think of it as building blocks, like you're just building on top each time. Now that dark line I put underneath is kind of like a, a curve or a fold kind of in the skin to show the shadows of the curving of the face. Kind of have it curving up to that nose. So here I'm just laying the dark color on and see my paint's still wet, so then I can blend it. And at some points I'm rinsing my brush, but others I'm not. And I'm just going into the next color, so the colors actually, sometimes I'll have more than one color actually on my brush. So then they can blend together. Getting the white highlight on the nose there. Now don't stop after this phase. There's going to probably be two more phased videos to show you what the next layer is going to be. So be on the lookout. So you see how that light and that dark work together. Now here I've jumped ahead. You need to take time. You see I did the back, the body part, but I don't want that to be as detailed as the face. So I just put in some lights and darks where I saw the change in color of the fur. And I did my paintbrush with the curvature of the body. Well, I hope you have fun finishing up, adding all those basic first shades in your portrait and you can see here's a finished one of Duke but notice we are not at that step yet so stay tuned for our next phases of how to paint the dog portrait and thank you for joining us and please unlock that creativity and get inspired and see what you can do if you enjoy these videos please consider subscribing and click the like button and let me know what you think